Storyteller is finally out. I have waited forever for this. This is a puzzle game where you have to drag characters into like a comic strip and make a story. Adam starts alone, then finds love, and then dies happy. Good for him. In addition to dragging characters, I can also drag scenes onto the comic strip. This one's for love, this one's for death, and eventually the stories will get much more complex. But if I want Eve to die heartbroken, then she probably has to witness Adam die first, and then die herself. It's very tragic, but a good puzzle. And it's all about using creativity to solve solutions, so you gotta see the ghost of a lover. Let's have Adam die, Eve see him, and then Adam will appear. Please marry me. No, you're too terrifying and floating. What's up, Bernard? This guy's got a thin face. I must create a story that has a healed heartbreak. We have thin-faced Bernard get married, witness his wife's death, but then get over it very quickly with Lenora. Oh, but there's a challenge to do it without any deaths. So after these two get married, Lenora could proposition Bernard, I want your thin face, say I'm already taken, have her be heartbroken, but get over it quickly by marrying Edgar. Now we can heal heartbreaks with the revive scene. The story is simple. You got a wedding and then a death. Heartbroken. And Isabel will rise from the dead. And then I don't know, do they have to get remarried? You may have to get remarried after your lover dies and revives. I'm not sure. I've got to create a story where everyone rejects Edgar. Dude, poor guy. So these two girls get married and Edgar's like, can you marry me? No. How about you? Can you marry me, Isabel? No. But he's still got to be rejected by Bernard. So one of them has to die. The other one's going to be sad. But then Lenora and Bernard can make up. And now Ed Edgar's going in for Bernard. He should have tried it earlier because now your heart's only broken. Now I gotta make a story about surviving spouses find comfort. So one couple marries, a second couple marries, and then we'll have two deaths. We'll drop off Lenora, sorry Edgar. And we'll also drop off Bernard, sorry Isabel, but it's okay for both of you because you guys can get together, even have an in to start talking to each other. Honestly, I'm happy they were able to move on. This is something I don't recognize at all from the demo. Edgar shocks himself. There's amnesia. So what if Edgar dies and Edgar watches? No, Edgar dies. Edgar forgets he died. <laughs> and then he looks at himself in the mirror. Gasp. Pretty relatable scenario. I hate when I forget when I'm dead. I'm gonna make a story where someone's rejected by their own spouse. Oh no. So it starts with a simple marriage. Lenora dies. But Edgar suspiciously gets over it very quickly. Such that when Lenora revives and is like, Hey Edgar, I'm back. He don't give a damn. If I were Lenora, I would go back to being a ghost to haunt the shit out of Isabel. Heartbroken spouses are reunited. So both of them have to heartbreak, but then get reunited. Is that what it's suggesting? So one of them could die, and then the other one would die. Just simply observes as a ghost. Or technically, I don't even need this scene, because I could actually have Lenore revive. And as she's reviving, witness Edgar's death. Now they're both heartbroken, but Edgar can revive, and they can reunite. Out of curiosity, can they be reunited on the other side? They can, and that's equally valid. We stand ghost love here. Heartbreak for everyone! You get a heartbreak, and you get a heartbreak, and you get a heartbreak. I can't wait. First heartbreak is Edgar. Then I'll bring a cool Lenore revive just in time for her to heartbreak. Welcome back to Earth. But you'll get over it quick. You'll marry an Isabel, and then die again because once wasn't enough. There, everyone's angry. I'm not sad enough to be happy by other people's sadness, but if I were, this game would be great. Heartbreak for everyone! You get a heartbreak, I can't wait. Introducing the poisoning mechanic, where Edgar and Lenore get married, and Lenore just drinks poison? Oh, I understand. Edgar would die, and she's so heartbroken that she drinks poison. That is 
really sad and bernard's just there something about his face just really i don't want to say gets me going because it's kind of the opposite you know what no I, I respect bernard i don't want to make him into like a bad guy in this situation he's seen the horrors that's the vibe i get from him a double poison the classic romeo and juliet story starts with a marriage starts with a death edgar drinks a poison and if i want to be extra mean i could put the scene after Lenora revives because he doesn't know but still drinks poison anyway and then Lenora can see him and then be like huh he must have thought that was tasty I'm gonna try some of my own oh and there's a bonus to have someone drink poison twice out of curiosity can he back to back drink poison of course not but Edgar could revive and then drink poison again it's like Lenora's revived, and you know reviving is real, but yet you do it again. I think he just likes it. I think he knows that he can revive, and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna keep testing fate. Well, the story's over, bitch. You messed up. Isabel remarries, but there's some new scenes. There's a fight scene and wine scene. So let's start with Edgar and Isabel. They get into a fight. Oh, how terrible. And then, does Edgar drink poison? No, he's not that upset. What is the wine scene all about? She sips her wine. So I doubt she'll just remarry right away, right? She won't just have a drunk marriage? No. She sips the wine. She maybe thinks about poisons. Ah. Come get your wine, Edgar. And then Isabel and Lenora live happily ever after. All I gotta say is, you better watch out, Lenora. Don't want to get on her wrong side. Isabel commits a crime. Tax evasion. Maybe it could be a crime out of jealousy where like Edgar and Lenora marry and she wants Edgar, but can't. So does she poison? Yep. Poisons the wine for Lenora. She drinks it, but everyone meets their demise. So Edgar could poison himself and then maybe Isabel would poison herself because she's like, well, I did this for Edgar, but he killed himself too fast. These are some cruel, cruel stories. Where's my happy ending? This is entirely new to me. A curse is lifted. So in the forest, the witch curses Snowy to become a frog who then kisses a prince. And after thinking about it, he does it? No, okay, it's the same scene. Well, maybe the witch would uh, curse the prince as well, so they're both frogs. And then frog kiss. What? but I got them a love boat. Why don't they smooch? Maybe they have to become acquainted first. Yeah, it's not about kissing frogs, it's about kissing strangers. This time I'm gonna turn the prince into a frog and then have Snowy kiss him. What if you kiss the witch? <laughs> she, she even puckers. Kiss me and the curse will be lifted. Well, what if they come across each other in the forest? Oh, I see, I see. That's the trick, right? The frog tells her that she's a prince, and they kiss. She's like, well, this frog better not be lying to me. And he wasn't. I'm just saying, back in the day, there were probably some clever frogs that thought up a lie. Oh, I'm totally a prince. You should kiss me. Just to trick some girls into kissing them. I'm on to you, frogs. I know what you do. The prince saves Tiny and the bearded old man. We have a witch curse tiny didn't shrink that much which is fair and then the prince could come across him in the forest and the frog tells him of who he once was and then the prince could relay that info to snowy no they fall in love well maybe snowy would still do that for prince nah she's not that much of a bro how is the prince supposed to save him what if the witch also curses snowy and out of curiosity what happens if two frogs meet in the forest they explain who they once were. Can they frog kiss now? Oh, they actually do kiss, but it doesn't do anything and this doesn't involve the prince. So hear me out. What if the prince meets Snowy in the forest and he falls in love with a girl and when it's time to kiss, the old switcheroo is pulled. <laughs> That's a great story. A story where the witch becomes the mirror's favorite. So, at first, the witch comes to the mirror, and the mirror is like, no, Snowy is my favorite, so I will brew up something in this cauldron. Come the old witch and frogify Snowy, and then go back to the mirror. He still loves the frog. <laughs> 
Well, what if we go back to the cauldron scene? Can I put the frog in the cauldron? Well, I can transform back to a non-witch. Oh, and now go to the mirror, because surely <laughs> we're now better than the frog. The mirror had a point, though. I think I would rather kiss the frog than the old hag. Than. Not then. The mirror praises everyone. There's a cliff scene. So first we'll have Peachy, who's praised. And then he falls off a cliff. But they're just chilling. There's no cliff shoving here. They're just sitting on the cliff. What if the frog pushes him off the cliff? Oh, I get it, right? Peachy, or Haiti has to go. And he's angry. Now he has cliff side motivation. I thought just because he was a hater, he would just naturally do that. Because, you know, haters gonna hate. See the diagram. And now he'll be the most loved? And the frog realizes that the mirror likes Haiti more? Which is absurd. Is the frog gonna push Haiti off? No, he's not. How do I get the mirror to praise the frog? Maybe Haiti just goes off a cliff. Ah, Peachy scares him off a cliff. And left is only frog. Oh, he's blushing. You do look cute, little frog. I can give you a nice little pat. Oh, I'm so glad this game came out. The Butler's Rampage. Got a ballroom scene with a duke and a duchess. They look happy, but the butler has a gun. Little do they know that the butler is about to show up. He doesn't even have a motivation. But you don't need a motivation when you have a gun. That didn't solve the puzzle though, so maybe I won't even have the people being happy in the ballroom. Just have the butler get them both. I mean, for all we know, these could have showed up like that. And he's just there with the smoking gun. The Duke feels relief. This is a bare bones puzzle. Mmm. <laughs> 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 He may be like this old timey European duke, but he is more American than I could ever imagine. And they say romance is dead. Well, if the butler takes it, he's thinking about the duke, but then he puts it back down. And the duke's like, mm hmm. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe I don't need this first love scene where he picks up thinking about it and the duke is like, gasp, where has it gone? But the butler was merely cleaning it so the duke can come back. A detective arrests the murderer. So once again, the butler can be thinking of the duke because he wants the gun's love and the duke had it. And now he puts it back because he wants to be the true lover. And maybe the detective sees the body? No, he sees the ghost. Maybe that's still an instrumental part of the story because he knows the butler does it. Is very suspicious and the butler's bad at hiding things. I probably don't even need this scene. I could use this scene. Let's see what happens when the detective goes here. He finds the fingerprints of the butler. Is this scene even needed then? I don't think so. Because then the detective can just arrest the butler. Give him a whole ball and chain. Yeah, he lugged that heavy thing around. That's why he's not like the other detectives. The detective arrests an innocent... Oh, so the butler gets the duke, and then he puts the gun back, but the duchess decides to- No, she wouldn't dare. Well, but we know someone who would dare touch the gun. Mm. <laughs> and that would be Mr. Love himself. The detective sees the fingerprints. But they're not from murder. They're from love. You've got the wrong man. A victim of his own vices. A true tragedy for the ages. Well, that's six chapters of Storyteller. I can't wait to see how many more there are in this book. It's so exciting. This game is finally out. So I hope you're here for the next episode. It's coming soon. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you on the next video. Have a wonderful day and peace.